What hey, am Gail. I here to do today? <laughs> I don't know. I'm a little scared, Gail. I'm going to show you how to use the shop vac. <laughs> <laughs> a, a whole new series of videos starring Gail. How to use miscellaneous home Tools. equipment. Yeah, miscellaneous. <laughs> so, what we're really here for is, and the shop vac is going to be used for this, we're going to show you how to take apart the mini Mauser and the Mini Mouser Electronic. Okay. Get into the burrs, clean it, and then inspect your burrs and see if they need to be replaced or not. Okay, and, and that's and, where the shop comes in. <laughs> and will you also show me how to clean out like my hoppers and stuff sure. as well? Okay. Yeah, sure. I'll show Teach you whatever you me, want. Grammy. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> it. So, but don't do it like I did. I picked this up and dropped it on the ground and woo -hoo. Yeah, busted it. Okay. That's okay, still works. Okay, so shut your gate valve if you happen to have uh, beans in there, lift this out, shut back the beans out of there, or else take the whole thing upside down and dump it in your garbage. Okay. You can do that too. This seems to get more out. Of the beans and also some of the grounds, right? Yep. Ready? I'm ready. Get that one on the countertop. the countertop a little bit. <laughs> Gale dusting. He's using right. a shop vac. <laughs> so then uh, the Phillips head screwdriver. What are we doing? I'll turn your cap. I was using it as a, a poking and probing. Mm. So this machine, the adjustment on it has a stop. Okay. So you have a range that you can do, but then it will stop at a certain point. Okay. And you can't take it off, in other words. Um, let me show you the stop. I gotta move this. Over. Is it that little screw that's there, Gail? Is that my stop? That's it. Okay. So if I try to go too far, that's it. I can't okay. go any further. There's a range and it's meant for espresso. So you take that out so that you can take the top burr off. I may not have to take it out all the way, but I'm going to anyway. Maybe I won't. <laughs> Get this out of the way. And then you're going to turn it uh, clockwise to come off. It's, it's not intuitive. It's just the opposite of what you would think it would be. So you're just basically, uh, it's on a, so, it's like oh, kind of like a little corkscrew and you're yep. bringing it out. Yep. Threaded. Okay. Threaded. See? Threaded right here. And then these springs, as you're unthreading it, make this burr go up. And okay. Make it, you know, when you're making your adjustments. So now yeah, there's your top burr. There's your bottom burr. I'm going to vacuum that out again. Okay. Because I want to. I'm going to narrow it down this time with a little tool. This is another uh, very technical. <laughs> <laughs> very technical. If you folks have yeah. any trouble figuring this one out, right cap. Yeah. She'll help you out. Meow. Yep. <laughs> The preliminary. So then I would get in here with a, some sort of a brush, anything that you can get in here to dislodge the ground coffee that's you want to get it off of everything that you can, mm -hmm. including the threaded area. Okay. And then uh, just go after it as best you can. And you can use, and I didn't bring any over, they have like little pokey tools like a dentist use. You can get into all these little oh, cracks and crevices. Okay. Yep. You know, you can get that out of there. And the other thing that I have used in the past, too, is a wire brush. Oh, okay. You can use little that, too. A little toothbrush. You can use a little toothbrush. Wire brush is a little, it's a little coarser, so it'll do a little better job, actually. That's Especially. what I use to brush my teeth, Gail. Oh, okay. Whatever. Let me see your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they're so pearly white. <laughs> why are your gums bleeding? <laughs> <laughs> and then you do the same over here, too. This one will be a little easier because it's in your hand. See how that's coming off of there? Uh huh. And all of that. On the sides. Yep. Yeah. And this will give you a chance at the same time when you get done to inspect the burrs to see what they look like. If the top burr is shot, you can bet the bottom one is too. Okay. So, what are my signs that it's shot? I'm going to show you. Let me vacuum this off again. <laughs> Get all that out of there. You just 
just have to be, oh, yeah. you just have to persevere. Because there's just, yeah, yep. just kind of impacted, compacted down in Whatever there. Whatever you can poke down in there. I took the wire brush and went along, see? Yeah. Just dislodging it. Whatever you can do. And the dentist tools are good, and you can get those at the hardware store. They have, like, these little picks you can buy. So, you know, if you run grinds through your machine regularly, that's going to keep your burrs, like, kind of free oh, of the oils and stuff. But it's better. not going to get at any of this stuff. So you no. still need to do this It will get this regularly. surface and this surface. Yeah, but it's not all the stuff in here you need to get mm. at it with a brush. Nope. Okay. So. I'm just taking this off now to show you. I run my hand across the burrs against the grain. In okay. other words, you're going into the sharp blades of the burr. Mm -hmm. You're not going with it. Okay. And if it feels sharp, you can bet it's pretty good. And if it feels kind of dull, swap them out. Okay. And the other thing you will notice is on these surfaces, these are the sharp surfaces. Each one of these cuts mm -hmm. is a sharp surface. If you see that it's got nicks in it or it looks shiny, that means something has hit it. Okay. And you probably should swap it out as well. It, you'll you'll see little nicks or you'll see shiny surface. It'll reflect light. They should if they're sharp, they will not reflect light. And so um, that would mean that my grind would be a little bit less yeah. consistent if yes. I had some of those little nicks. Yep. And okay. it, it just won't work as well. Okay. It just you'll have a hard time getting the, the true consistency, and it just you'll see chunkos, and it just won't be not it won't be pretty. Won't be pretty. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right. So if I do need to replace these, it's pretty easy, right? Three screws. Just take them off. Same thing same here. Inside. Yep, same thing there. Three screws. These are the paddles that after the ground coffee comes out from between the two burrs, these paddles shoot the ground coffee down into the, the, chute. the chute, which is right down in there. Mm -hmm. So right this would there. be a good time, too, to get after that chute to clean out if you have any old coffee in there, yep. right? Well, on this machine, too, you can take the finger guard off. <clears throat> show you how to do that. pain to get back on but hey we got all day mm -hmm. well you do <laughs> i'm going out for lunch oh, well, three martini <laughs> liquid lunch it's my new diet gail oh. they were talking about that on npr the other day does the did that ever really exist <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now there's the shoot. So again, I would poke at it with something, and I would also use the vacuum. Oh yeah. Okay. You could um, you could maybe get a brush in there too to loosen up. We got a little chunk, so you could do yep. a little loosening this, in there. See this thing here? Yes. That is a, put there on purpose, don't take it out, folks. That uh, declumps your coffee. Oh, if it comes out, it's breaking it up. Mm -hmm. Got breaking it. Breaking up the clumpies. So you can see there's just a little piece left back in there. I don't have my pokey tool with me, but that's, I would get in there as much as I could. Okay. Get it all cleaned out. And so just really well with the brush and, um, and yep. vacuum kind of a story. Brush or uh, compressed air. Compressed air. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea, that too, to also, better. yeah. But you don't want that in the kitchen. No. I mean, if you mm -hmm. don't have compressed air, then the brush and the vacuum, and everybody has a vacuum. Because also, like, you know, we are not going to be held responsible for the hallucinations you have if you do too much compressed air in your kitchen. Right, Gail? <laughs> Disclaimer time. Uh, depends on what kind of compressed air <laughs> you're doing. So this guy, burrs and everything is basically the same, same, but we have this different chamber up front. So well, what should I do? I would take I would take these out. The screws out again and take the finger guard out. Okay. And then just get down in there with a rag and a brush and the vacuum again and just whoop. really clean out those little chambers. What you can do, and I'll show you. We're just resting that the end of the vacuum hose up top and then yeah just up, up top of these pie shapes and as i was doing that every pie shape it was bringing around more mm -hmm. stuff from back there i could see there was a pile back in there and it mm -hmm. kept bringing it around not bad no mm -mm. yeah and then you, you know you can clean it out with a paper towel 
And now wash. my um, hoppers, right? I'm going to get some coffee oils on there, so I probably oh. want to wash those really well. Soap and water. Yeah. You know, at the sink. Okay. Nothing, nothing fancy about nothing that? Nothing fancy there. Degreaser, whatever. Not, not chemicals. Just something that will get that oils off of that. If you okay. like, I've seen hoppers that are brown. <laughs> yeah. You can't see through them. Meow. Yeah. They look um. like that. So it's better to keep that clean, and then the beans will flow better, too. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, um... My hopper, I probably want to clean, you know, pretty, pretty regularly. Good. Maybe on, two or three weeks. Every time, maybe, yeah, every few weeks. This kind of maintenance, taking it apart and stuff, how often would I want to do that? Six months. Okay. Yeah. And if, if what if I run grinds? grinds? You could probably go even longer. Okay. You could probably go eight, nine months. It depends on the oily beans. If I'm using a really oily bean, you get more sticky residual stuff in here. And so you need to Then I would do it more them. often. If you're using a drier <laughs> bean, I think you could stretch it out to six, eight months. And I guess also if like one day you're grinding and it's super like all over the place, unlike before, you might say, oh, let me bring it out. Maybe you've got a nick on there or something. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you'll be, <clears throat> when you... When you look at it, it will be visible, a mm -hmm. neck. It will be a shiny, something unlike all the rest of it. But so this like is, this is sharp. <clears throat> in a, these are probably like a burr replacement. I would say what I think they recommend if you're using this in a low level commercial, like a, once a year. Oh, do so, they? Yeah. That so often? like in a home, you Some, probably could um, you have could a go, few years. Yeah, probably five if you didn't, years. If you didn't damage it. Yeah, and there are beans that are harder than others, too. Because they're rated not on age, but um, the number of pounds that you put through it. That's right. So. And there is a counter. Yeah. So. Cool. All right. So that is cleaning the Mazer Mini Type and, uh, E and just regular and doser model. I just noticed one of the springs from here was on the floor. Don't, it shot yeah. out. <laughs> don't, don't lose those springs. Yeah. Gail. <laughs> together or is it my my helper gonna come in yeah we'll have the production mask. assistant come in and help you <laughs> all right uh, in other words i'll be doing yeah it. <laughs> thank you very much gail yeah you're welcome